these men have given rise to a world of intense competition, driving competitors to bring their bodies to the absolute physical peak. We need to come up with a contest in which all the Mr. Universes can compete in. All the Mr. Americas Mr. Universe can compete against one another to who is the best in the world. Because that's a great idea. Joe Weider was a visionary and he established the Mr. Olympia contest in 1965. So he said, I want to create the ultimate bodybuilding competition. And the athletes, bodybuilding will always be changing. It will never cease to evolve. What I envisioned was to work, expand, and go as far as we can go. But I never envisioned that it would become that prominent all over the world. Larry won Olympia in 65 and 66 in really outstanding fashion. And he was so impressive in those days. People still say, Larry's effect on the audience, they never witnessed anything like it. When his music came, he walked out in silhouette and just stood there. And of course, with those arms and those delts, you could tell it was Larry Scott and the hair. You know, he, he had his own particular shape, he had these great arms. One of the best of all time. He was also aware of somebody coming up behind him real fast. And along came Sergio. When Sergio Oliva came onto the scene, his presence was impossible to ignore. And I looked at his body and I thought, I am never going to beat this guy. Blessed with an enormous amount of raw talent and driven by a true warrior spirit. Sergio is one of the most gifted genetic bodybuilders there ever was. This huge chest, huge arms, flaring thighs, tiny waist. He was just this incredible display of genetics, and everybody was impressed. Nobody's ever not been impressed by Sergio Oliva. Made him seem almost unreal. His nickname, The Myth, was well earned. He was so far advanced over the rest of us, everybody else could have just posed their ass off, and Sergio could have stood there, and he walked away with the contest. never seen anybody that genetically gifted. Still to this day I haven't. But it would take a young Austrian kid with an unpronounceable last name before they and their sport finally made it to an international stage. He had the mind of a champion. He had a heart of a champion. He was focused. He had a powerful will. And he was very intelligent. He learned quickly. That then made the Olympia between 70 and 75. That's when the Olympia took over as the contest to win, to decide who's the best physique on the planet. And he kept saying over and over, I can't believe that I actually beat Sergio. That blew his mind that he actually had, had toppled Sergio. And then, of course, a few weeks later, he was able to beat him again at the Mr. Olympia. Zane was like a, a walking statue. You know, he, he had he practiced his posing to perfection. You know, there was there's, every pose was thought out. Frank basically was very dominant in the late 70s. He had a type of physique that was very acceptable to the average guy. And you know, I basically had a goal. I wanted to make the most of my physique and go to the top, win Mr. Rock, and however long it took. Franco, who was always two steps behind Arnold, makes his comeback from a, a leg injury a few years before when in the world's strongest man that dropped a refrigerator on his leg and broke it. What a monster. Oh. This guy's only like Arnold. Can't oh, look at this one now. Oh. See, this is the right part, right? And he won that contest.
1982 saw Chris Dickerson become the first African American to win the Mr. Olympia after more than a decade of competing. In uh, second place, brings her in USA. of Lebanon claimed his Mr. Olympia victory. He came out and he had a Christmas tree back like nobody had ever seen before and he, he won the contest. And this time I came in in the best shape of my life. There was Lee Haney, this you know, this Lee Haney who's just at that time was a freak, real wide clavicle, little waist, you know, huge back, thick chest. Lee Haney came along with a combination of size and good aesthetics. I enjoyed being the underdog. I didn't see the shadow coming. And I remember when he walked out on stage, and as soon as he walked out on stage and stopped and turned, I'm like, this is over. He was so far ahead of everybody. And he was beating incredible bodybuilders like, you know, Fletch Wheeler, Kevin Lerone, these kind of guys that were beautiful physiques, but next to him, there was no comparison. I was the first European bodybuilder to win Mr. Olympia and also training at the time in Europe. The evolution of bodybuilding changed when Dorian came into the scene because he was one of the first bodybuilders to compete at like 260, 265. So he set this like freakiness to the sport. In any sport, things evolve, and once somebody achieves a certain standard, then everybody else starts achieving it, so it's really a psychological barrier. You know, once a guy runs a certain distance in a certain time, maybe there's a barrier there. Once he's done it, then all of a sudden everybody starts doing it, so. Dorian ushered in something that brought out the bigness and the size, and it was a game changer for sure. It was unheard of, nobody ever seen a physique like that. But now a lot of guys are getting bigger. They're changing their training, they're doing things differently in order to come in bigger. The torch was passed to another born champion who changed bodybuilding for good, Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman just came out of nowhere. You know, Ronnie was just an amalgam of muscle that uh, a freak of nature that we won't see for a long time. It was the beginning of the end for me and every other bodybuilder. I never beat him, nobody else never beat him since. And he went on to be an eight-time Mr. Olympia, one of the greatest bodybuilders ever of all time, man. Our pitcher Chris Dickerson. I was just overwhelmed by what the body could look like. I couldn't believe it. I knew that I had something that I could battle Ronnie with. In 2006, he beat Ronnie. And knocked off the champ, which he was going for his record ninth, Mr. Olympia. He had already won eight. Jay 
from the previous years. You know, each year he was getting, you know, he wasn't getting much better than he was the previous year. So he was getting worse and worse. I said, well, you know, I think I can beat Jay. You know, so we put our heads together, came up with a game plan, man, and we went into the Olympia full steam ahead. I, 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 I just knew I could beat him that show. I knew it wasn't going to be on. himself in 2000 when he walked out. I knew that coming back, I just had to be better than I ever was, and I knew I was. And... Jay Cutler! Nobody in the history of bodybuilding has ever come back from losing a title to regain it. Jay, you become that first man and put your name in the history books. And I always said that, it's, it's not how many times you win it, it's a fashion to win it in. I never thought one was attainable. Now I got two, three, four. I truly feel that my type of physique is gonna recharge the sport a little bit. That's just what I did and I made sure of that. I was very confident because I just knew in my heart that I'm going to shock the world. So who knows how big I may get. I know what got me the Mr. Olympia title. It wasn't trying to outmass anyone. It was about being more aesthetic but yet having the muscles round like very cartoonish and having sharp conditioning to make those muscles stand out even larger than life. You know, I started believing in myself a long time ago when most people weren't paying attention. So I started studying pictures of, you know, the different types of body that I'm going to be standing on stage with. I started looking at Phil and I keep telling myself, hey, you know what, I can beat Phil. Just bring the best, Sean Roden. You know, I keep telling myself, how can I be better? Don't worry about being as big as Big Ramy or any of these guys. But if I'm able to bring the best me, like all-time best me. I mean, it's not easy to beat seven-time Mr. Olympic. This guy beat him. I saw Randy Coleman lose the title. I was there, and I thought that was impossible. That sparked something in me to really pursue bodybuilding at a, a level I wasn't really considering before. That's what the game is about. It's about quality. And uh, even though we're improving, as bodybuilders do, the quality is the most important. New Mr. Olympia, Brandon.